Hi guys, um, I'm Barlow. I used to go by Dolphy. Uh, I was kind of the main runner of this game years ago. Uh, lots of other people have stepped up to the plate now. Um, I'm sort of on the retired side, but uh, I still play this game regularly. And uh, I've done this at SGDQ 2015, Anime on Display, a couple other marathons, and I used to you know, stream speed runs of it pretty often. Uh, so I'm here to go ahead and give you the best run that I can. I'm a little bit rusty, uh, but I can promise you I'll at least give you something entertaining, if nothing else. All right, well, I'm going to try to actually start the timer on this thing. Okay, do you want so, me to tell yeah, you when to start? Count me down and let's go for it. All right, three, two, one, and start. All right, so this is Echo the Tides of Time. Um, if you're familiar with Echo speedruns, you may have seen Echo the Dolphin 1. Um, Echo the Dolphin 1 is much more skip and glitch based. This game is a lot more movement based. So a lot of what is going to save me time here is movement, though there, also, there are some pretty tough tricks in the run. Um, so, if you're not really too familiar with how this series works, it's basically like every level is a mini Metroidvania, and you have to find keys and such. Oh, I missed a, a teleport ring. Nice. Um, they're going to find keys and stuff in order to complete levels. Um, and you have an air meter, which you're not, it's not going to come up too often, um, but that's like your incentive to go to the surface for air. Uh, so, this is an auto-scrolling stage. Um, there's a couple of these throughout the game, so they're a good time to read donations if we're going to be doing that. Um, but I just have to go through these teleport rings until the end of the level, um, and you're going to see me go through this a couple times. Uh, for the most part, this game, when I started running it, the world record was 43-43 by Vorpal, and then uh, I got the first sub-40, and I think my PB right now is like a 36-50-something, and the world record is 35-10 by Cronoon, who is the person who's put the most work into this game right now. All right, so this is a very long five minute level where you have to collect a lot and a lot of crystal songs. However, I'm just going to skip the level by swimming through these rocks. Yeah. This is more of a cinematic level, but the movement here can be a little bit tough. The main important thing right here is I need to align myself with this rock, which I can push to break a barrier. And hopefully this doesn't lag the Genesis too much. Yeah, we're good, we're good. There's lots of visual effects. I'm gonna go ahead and weave through this. Make sure I connect my sonar. All right, so it was a little bit sloppy at the end there, but for the most part, that was a pretty good run. Now, Two Tides. This is one of the most movement-intense levels in the game. Um, there's a lot of really odd zigzags that you have to do that I'm honestly really out of practice with, like right here, and there's falling rocks in the way as well. Um, by charging and hitting my sonar button, I can keep my momentum as I move through these rocks, and also the charge will home in, so it'll help me for um, just going through this part really quickly, not that I'm doing that, like, right now. All right, so I gotta go ahead and get this key glyph twice. So I'm going to go ahead and go grab it again with a shortcut. We're going to go through this part one more time, and pretty soon we're going to be time traveling, so I hope you guys are ready for that. This uh, Echo the Dolphin is a story about a dolphin that time travels and fights aliens, so if that's not cool enough for you, well, I got news for you. Anyway, so I'm going to push this turtle down. Oh, okay, no, I got it, I got it. I'm going to push the turtle down against the current that'll let me swim through it. I'm going to break this glyph right here. And now you're gonna time travel a thousand years into, I think it's a thousand years, a thousand years into the future to a time period where the ocean lives and breathes. This is what dolphins will evolve. If you wanna know the detailed lore, dolphins have evolved to have helium sacs in them so that they can levitate. So the next few levels are gonna contain levitating dolphins and I'll be going into giant water tubes in the sky. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you can get a lot of it from the instruction manuals and the story itself. The game actually does have text dialogue, but I skip it all the time. All right, so we got the first kind, well, I mean, there was the first skip with the rocks earlier. I'm gonna be doing a, what's called a glyph skip, and basically barrier glyphs will push you, and so what I'm gonna try to do is a, approach the glyph in a way where the glyph will bounce me up into the loading zone of the next level. This saves me, I wanna say, a little less than a minute. Oops, oh, my movement's definitely a little outdated. I'm gonna hop onto these flying dolphins. They're gonna th take me to this tube. I just gotta get myself in the right position, charge at the right time. Ooh, missed it by just a bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and reline up. This is kind of the backup, line myself with the edge of this water tube right here. Go ahead and try that one more time. There we go, perfect. That's what it should look like. All right. Oh, I missed the key glyph. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. Yeah, this is a pretty short level. Um, there, there is actually a very similar skip you can do in this level compared to the last one, but the glyph, the key glyph in this case is not very far out of the way. And if you mess up this trick literally at all, it's slower, so we don't go for it. Okay, we've got an auto scroller. Um, again, now we're in the sky. Uh, I don't want to die on this level because I'll lose a lot of time, obviously. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty much smooth sailing. I've done this. I, I've been playing this game for 18 years now. Uh, oh, oops. Well, I say that, but I just died because I wasn't paying attention. Uh, 
I've been playing this game for 18 years, so I'm pretty comfortable with it. Uh, I grew up playing it casually with my sisters, uh, and I just fell in love with the series. I never really stopped playing it. I, I, oh my gosh, I'm not paying attention at all. <laughs> all right, let's try again. All right, I guess I will have to put in some focus. We're just gonna drop here and there. Just a little, I'm gonna go to the left. And I'm gonna go to the right. All right, from here it should be smooth sailing, although I think I cursed myself by saying that earlier. So did you explain um, like what these water tubes are supposed to be lore-wise? So a thousand years into the future, the ocean is a living being, and so it connects itself to different parts of the world with these giant water tubes in the sky. So effectively, this is like airplane travel in the future of dolphins. And just in case anyone's wondering, there are no humans in this universe that we know of. Just gonna go ahead and just sonar these so I don't fall off. All right, I'm gonna go full focus mode for this level. Uh, hopefully I don't joke. Let's take a look. Uh-oh, that is not good, okay. So I, I think I'll be okay. Um, I'm gonna have, uh-oh, uh oh oh, that's not really good, that's really not good. Okay, never mind. everything's fine. I'm being chased by a giant Medusa, I'm gonna let it reset myself. It's really important I don't die on this level because if I do, I have to start two levels back. So if I go to that, I'm honestly probably just gonna debug menu so I don't waste anyone's time. But it looks like this is all set. Yep, navigating through the tubes. Okay, that's the most stressful part of the run, so we're good. <laughs> so how's that level normally supposed to go, like with the red thing chasing you? Oh, uh, normally you just go so fast it has like no chance to catch up to you. Um, but in like a casual playthrough where you don't really have the comfort of the speed, it'll just chase you and harass you forever. It is, I think, timer based on easy mode, but if you play in hard mode, it literally will not go away. So, and also this, just for clarification, I do this run on uh, easy mode um, just because it's easier. And what hard mode adds is a couple extra stages that are auto scrollers, which I really uh, don't really enjoy. Um, and it changes the layout to some levels. Uh, Cronoon, or not Cronoon, sorry, there's one other run the runner I can't remember the name of that has started doing hard mode runs, which is a category no one ever really paid attention to until recently. So uh, that's like a different kind of flavor of the run. Gonna go ahead and get a bird to push me down. We're good. Go ahead. Wait, you're a seagull now. Yeah, so in the future, there are these metaspheres that Echo, well, actually, even in the present, there are these metaspheres that Echo can use to change his DNA. So you can turn into other animals when you collide with them. Uh, in a lot of cases, you end up just like not going into those metaspheres at all in the speedrun, but you do. So I'm in another auto-scroller right now. Um, the main thing actually about these auto-scrollers that I do have to pay attention to is there's a, the Genesis is only so powerful and it tries to load a lot of objects in this kind of semi-3D environment. So I am trying to kind of move, oops, I missed that, uh, that ring. You are kind of trying to move in a way that'll reduce lag. And normally you just have to catch enough of these rings to teleport, right? Right, yeah, I, I forget that count. Um, but every time I miss one, it's about a three to four second time loss. I think even the world record still misses a few. So like, they're all in a set pattern, they come in a set order, but there's just like random variables about your movement speed that can make it hard to line up. All right, so we've got another skip. Um, this one, I think I should be able to do, um, but basically I'm gonna have, you saw those big birds, uh, push me down as a seagull earlier, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be turning into a bird, have it push me through a very specific part of the map. I'm going to line myself up. Oh, it's kind of hard to see in this TV. I'm going to try to line myself up with a very specific texture, and a bird should come by and push me through. It might take me a few tries. Nope, we got it first try, so excellent. I'm going to go down, clip through this wall, and out into the next level, which is the Asteroids Cave. And so the gimmick of this level is you have to push these glyph halves together in order to progress, so that's what you're going to see me do. So we got a sonar it. Um, the one thing I have to be careful of is that uh, objects like don't really exist off screen in this game. So if this goes off screen, it unloads and I have to go back and start over. So I can only go so fast in this. Um, with practice though, you can still do it pretty quickly. I'm gonna go ahead, oops, did not mean to do that. Missed a line to that, we're gonna go up, shimmy to the right. This flying dolphin's gonna give us a little lift. Go down here, I'm gonna wait for this worm thing to come and eat these rocks for me. It just tracks my movement, so I just kind of hang out here for a minute. Now I'm gonna push it out of my way so it goes away. And now I gotta push this one up. And I'm gonna go ahead and line up this glyph with the other. Great. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and text mash for my life. So actually, uh, seeing how you scooped that glyph half, there is, there is like an optimal way of turning in this game, right? 
Uh, yeah, so typically you don't want to turn by just going from left to right directly. You kind of want to slide your finger across all the angles in between. That's how you do the tur most turning without losing your momentum. And another thing about this game is that your charge, I think I mentioned, homes onto enemies. So if you want to like quickly move, if you're moving horizontally and you want to move yourself like up and down, then you can uh, charge into an enemy that's at like roughly the place you want to be and that makes the movement smoother. So you'll see me do kind of more like these little like looping turns, like kind of like U-turns that you would do in a car in order to conserve movement. Oh gosh, that's, a, that's never happened before. Um, okay, that was a little weird, but I think everything's fine. Um, in this level, I'm going to be rescuing some orca babies, so I'm going to go ahead and find them. Um, I'm just going to line myself up. They'll come find me. Go down, grab this one. All right. So uh, there's no, so there's a barrier that gets blocked until you rescue the orca babies, and then basically do like an escort mission in this level. Um, we've actually looked into it, and uh, you can. There is a kind of a way to bypass the barrier in this level, but for some reason the loading zone still doesn't exist until you rescue the orcas. So you have to do this. There's literally no way around it. And the difference with the hard mode in this level is that you have to rescue, I think, eight pairs instead of two. That sounds right. So you have to do a bit of backtracking because I have to take them to the big orca at the beginning of the level. Yeah, my movement's very outdated. So now that now this is an escort mission, and the key here is I've got to follow this baby orca without him going off screen too much. Once he gets to a certain point, I can basically speed run my way to the end of the level, and I'll be good. But for now, we're going to do some control movements. Just keep this guy on screen for as like as best as I can. Does he also fall prey to the uh, out of screen, out of memory? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, escort missions have. Thankfully, there there's only a couple of them in this game, but escort missions are like notoriously buggy for casual playthroughs. But as long as you keep a controlled speed, it's not bad at all. And the, we're going to be going into a level with another escort mission in just a second. So we're going to wait for him to turn around, and now I can speed along to the end of the level. Oh, oh, oh that's bad. Uh, I might have just messed up, but I think I'm okay. Let's hope I don't have to do it over again. Yeah, we're good. We're good. The barrier's gone. Loading zone should exist. We're good. Okay. All right, so this is another escort mission level. Um, we're gonna be escorting a dolphin out of the uh, out of this cave, and it's gonna take us to a secret cave. But I need to uh, there we go. Go ahead and talk to him. And yeah, this is kind of a, a relatively uh, uneventful part of the game because this is basically just keeping these guys on screen. Um, there's a part here where I'm gonna be jumping over some rocks with him. That part gets like incredibly buggy, and I've lost countless, countless runs to it. So hopefully that doesn't happen here. He's gonna do a loop around these rocks. So I'm just gonna go here to meet him. Hopefully, he doesn't glitch out on me. There he is. Cool. It's a very pretty level. All right. So now this is kind of the part where things might get a little messed up. I'm gonna do my best to keep him on screen. All right. No problems. And we're gonna be going straight to this. And he's the reason why I need this dolphin is because he's gonna give me a song. Uh, that'll let me break open some rocks. So I can get to this part without this escort, but I can't break the barrier that takes me closer to the end of the level. That's kind of how most of these levels are structured, is there's usually some kind of a barrier song that you need, or key song that you need to get from a dolphin, or from an object in order to break barriers. So I'm gonna break these rocks, and go ahead and scoot down the best I can. Jeez, my movement is very outdated. Go down. And then the exit, you normally have to get another escort, but because I already know where the end of the level is, hidden in these rocks, uh, this level is Sea of Darkness. It has a bit of a design oversight in that um, I normally have to go to two different key glyphs in order to beat it, but because of the way that the level is structured, you can actually just go back and grab the same key glyph twice, which saves about, I don't know, 10 seconds, give or take. So go ahead and grab that. I'm gonna go ahead and use this to break a barrier that I'm not intended to. But they're all registered the same way. So I can use any key glyph on any uh, barrier glyph. And I'm gonna go ahead and push these. These will break a barrier which I need to rescue another orca baby. Um, the sonar, as you can see, lights up the level, although I know the layout very well, so I don't really need it for vision. Um, the main thing here is just like not sonaring it too fast because it slows down your movement and does add a bit of additional lag. We can go up. You can see there's like a bit of slowdown there. Take him back to the mom. Skipping a cutscene by mashing really fast. 
Now this level, uh, Vents of Medusa, normally I talk about those metaspheres you transform in. Um, you're not going to be going in them in this level for the speed run because it's just faster to do this as a dolphin. So instead of like turning into a jellyfish, which is what this level is designed to have you do, I'm just literally going to be swimming straight through it. Um, the health can get kind of low just because you take a lot of hits, but hopefully I won't take too much damage. Um, there was, I don't know if they're still working on it, there was like a potential skip found for this level, or not found, but a potential theoretical skip for this level that hasn't really gotten any progress, but that barrier glyph right there, we think there might be a way to skip it. We've got another auto-scroller coming right up in this level. Oh, sorry, I need to go up and down. Ah, come on, you can do it, there we go. Yeah, so I'll slow down. And then the jellyfish here are notoriously laggy, so I'm just going to be kind of hanging out here, trying not to keep them on screen for too long. Um, another thing about this is I can mash charge here, which gives me a speed boost, but it does hold me on to the uh, jellyfish like it does in the 2D parts of the game. Um, so that'll like throw me off center if I'm trying to line up a certain way with these rings. And then I, mi I think I missed an aerial ring on every single auto scroller so far, so hopefully I don't miss any on here. Also, while I'm here, I just want to give a shout out to my boyfriend, uh, Michael, aka McPeanuts. I know he's watching from work to support me. Probably isn't supposed to be doing that, but <laughs> there's that. All right. So I think I've got one more teleport ring down here, and I should be able to advance to the next level. Yep. It's not bad. So this uh, this dolphin right here, uh, yeah, sorry, I haven't even shown him, but I'm going to be taking him this fish. If you talk to him, he says, give me a fish. And apparently that dolphin, confirmed by the creator that I'm giving this fish to, is actually a future version of Echo. So there is like some, there's some complex like One Piece lore that's going on right here. All right, so I'm gonna give it to him. He's gonna let me access this barrier glyph. We're gonna go ahead and take this kind of tough jump. Got it, no problem. Break these sharks, go down. And now we're just, this is, this is all pretty much movement from here. There's some blocks that I have to move down currents. Uh, they do have a tendency to despawn. Uh, so I'm gonna be, oops. Ooh, be really careful about that, but that one was fine. There's gonna be another rock that falls here. Go down against the current, and I think this is just a straight shot to the end of the level, pretty much. I'm gonna be taking a downturn. Now I've got a boss. Uh, this might take me a few tries. I haven't actually had time to practice this one. This shell does damage to me over time. It's gonna spawn some enemies that'll kill me really fast. I can uh, speed it up by pushing it down. Um, and then it's gonna home in on me and smash me. So I'm trying to get this down to the bottom as fast as possible. This is kind of what Echo boss fights are like. They're sort of more, oh, ooh, that's not good. Ooh, I might die if I'm not careful. We are good. Okay, it's slowing down the Genesis a lot. Um, that's kind of what Echo boss fights are like is they tend to be more like puzzles uh, with like some kind of dangerous threat. So I'm gonna push this down. Oh, ooh, that's bad. I took a lot of damage. My movement is definitely not quite there. And it's gonna go ahead and spawn an eel. This is looking rough. Okay, I got some health back. I'm gonna be okay. Just gotta make sure I crack this eel, go back up, push this down some more, grab a fish to keep my uh, strength. You eat fish to get your health back. Oh, I missed that one. Clownfish, thank you. So push that down. I'm gonna go ahead and kill that eel. All right, it's getting pretty close to the bottom now. Should home in on me. That eel's gonna come down. All right, we're really close to the bottom. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and push this shell down a pretty good amount, and now it's gonna spawn one more little boss. I've just gotta mash A real quick, and it'll go down. It's not a problem. A little scary there. I haven't practiced that part in a while. And so now we get to the part of the game where I'm collecting globes, as the asteroid just said right here, to re rebuild this DNA strand, which will give me the powers I need to defeat the vortex aliens that are invading Earth. Um, so this level, I'm going to be going ahead and, and collect, we go collect some orbs, take them back to the teleport ring. These are basically like extended fetch quests. Um, they really, these parts of the game, uh, we have more skips for now, but it used to be in the speed run, you really had to get the majority of the orbs in the game. Um, so being able to navigate through, I really, I, I enjoy these parts of the game because you have to navigate through the same area in different directions, so it's kind of like testing different aspects of your movement. So we're gonna go ahead and go down to the right, break that barrier open, grab this. take this back to the teleport ring and kind of kind of go back and forth between it and then after this I'll go to the next level. One small thing to note and I have lost many many runs to this is if you enter these teleport rings too fast while you're carrying globes the globes will despawn. We have no idea why this happens uh, but so you'll see me slow down a bit as I go into these teleport rings while I'm carrying them because that is like an actual run killer. All right. So next level we have the eye. This is the longest level in the game. Uh, about five minutes if you do it fast as a speed run. Um, however, you can skip this level. 
I'm a little bit out of practice with the skip, so just bear with me. It might take me a few tries, but basically I'm gonna try to get these glyphs to push me through the wall so I can skip large parts of it at a time. I think that was a little bit too late on my charge timing, so let's try again. Not quite, I'm gonna go ahead and reposition myself. But this, the glyph will push me back if I can swim against it like that, so I'm trying to get it to push me at a certain angle in the wall. So let me just try to set this up. Oh, that was definitely a little too early, but I think I'm in a better position now. Mm, that might be good. Or is it not enough? Not enough. Okay, so let me just give this a quick check. Mm, that actually might be okay. No, I gotta be a little closer. I'm gonna go ahead and do a different setup by just adjusting to about right here. Come on, please. Wow, oh, man, I'm really struggling with this. Sorry about that. I did practice this this morning and it was going okay, but I guess I'm struggling with it now. So let's go ahead and just do one more little reposition right here. That looks good, that looks good. I think we got it. All right, so I am running a little low on air, so I might actually die. I still have to do the next part of the trick, so don't get, don't get too excited yet. That actually looks okay. Um, I don't think that's gonna work, but it should give me a better positioning on my uh, horizontal coordinate. Mm, a little too early, I think, so. All right, I am running out of air, so I might have to do this again. Okay, that looks good, that looks good. Uh, hopefully it pushes me up. Yes, we got it, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go down. Out of the level. That's a really tough trick, so I'm actually surprised I was able to do it as fast as I did. <laughs> All right, so these big whales will slow me down. I'm trying to not make contact with the big whales until I make contact with this one right here, which is going to go ahead and break this barrier for me. Um, so there's an old task that actually grabbed this orb through the wall, but we haven't really had any luck recreating it, so that's still kind of an unsolved mystery of the game. And take this down. This is not really like, oops, I mistimed it. There we go. It's not really like a big level, but it's more of like a story level. So there's like story things that happen in it. We're all set with this one, so I can go to the next level. This is Deep Bridge. This is one of the big orb collecting levels in the game. Um, there we go. So I'm just gonna be taking four pairs of orbs back to the asteroid, and then I will complete the finish the level, no problem. Uh, we're very close to getting a skip. Uh, we can do a similar wall clip that we used in the level that I just skipped, but um, there's the collision is set up a little bit differently, so we can clip into the wall, but we don't really know if we can clip out of it, I believe is what the problem is, and I have to double check on that. So go ahead and grab these orbs really quick. Up, I'm gonna go up one more. Straight down. No, not this way, not this way. Jeez. Take this in here. Yeah, this is a more movement intense level. Like, the difference between uh, high and mid level movement in this level does matter a lot. Um, I used to, like, be really, really good at this level, but eh, not really anymore. I'm slowing down so I don't accidentally trigger the orb glitch, which makes my orbs despawn. Down we go. Just one more pair ought to do it. I just gotta grab them from here. There we go. I love the music in this game. <laughs> All right, so. We're pretty much good, I can just go straight to the exit of the level. I'm going to do something really silly. Uh, a new trick was found in the next level. Um, I have been working on the skip as of 30 minutes ago. So I'm gonna go for it three times, and if I can't do it in three times, I'm just gonna end the level normally because I would love to show it off, but I don't think I quite have the execution to do it today, so let's give it a try. So there's a very specific way I can clip into the wall. So I'll go ahead and just give this three tries just for fun, and if I can't get it there, well, I can't get it. That's fine. That was pretty close. I gotta go ahead and clip into the wall by untransforming at the right time. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it a second time. No, uh, it was definitely way too early, so I'll give it one more shot. Down a little. I got it. So uh, I learned this trick 20 minutes ago. So yeah, that's pretty darn cool. Oh gosh, how do I clip out of the wall? Okay, there we go. We're all good. All right, so that's my first time ever executing that trick in an actual run, so that's pretty neat. Um, I. I think it was Eludra, uh, she was the runner who f uh, found that trick, but that's a really nice trick. That saves about 40 seconds if you do it first try. Even though it took me three tries, I actually think that still saves like at least 30 seconds off what my PB would be. 
I don't actually remember what my PB is. I want to say it's like a 3650. That sounds right. So there's a whole minute to shave off in the run now. This is a pretty fast auto scroller just because the sharks give you a nice speed boost. Awesome. We're going through here. Oh, I just want to say, like, the trend of me doing runs at marathons and then trying new tricks I learned 20 minutes before is really funny. Because when I did this uh, game at SGDQ, I had learned a new trick that was previously tasked only, like, right before my run, and I somehow managed to execute it first try. So that's kind of fun. All right, Lunar Bay. This is a very one of the most fun levels in the game because you have so much big open space that you don't normally have in other levels. Um, there's actually a little skip in this level now. I don't know how to do it, uh, and it doesn't save a ton of time. I think it's about five to ten seconds, so I will not be executing that for you today. Um, but if you ever go watch Cronin's world record, I know he has that trick down to a science, so you should definitely check that out if you want to see more. This game is really, really neat at a high level, like really neat. Go ahead and break this barrier. Uh oh, I don't want to get grabbed by that guy. I really don't want to get grabbed. Yeah, if you get grabbed by these, you get taken to like a mini game level and then you have to escape. So I am definitely trying to not get grabbed because that is legit like a three minute time loss. <laughs> All right, going down. We're going to go up and around. Not too bad. Um, so now I'm going to be traveling to the future. And we traveled to the future earlier in the game, but that was the good future. This is going to be the evil future. Some of you saw me practicing this earlier, but this basically looks like you're at the top of a skyscraper. Because in that, this like dark future, there's no ocean, I believe. Uh, there's just these pre-made water tubes and structures. So I will not even be in water for a lot of the time. The next level has one of the hardest tricks in the game. I will be doing a safety save uh, strat for it just because I'm really not confident in my ability to execute it today. Um, but I will do my best and it's a pretty cool looking trick. I will let you know when it's coming up. But yeah, as you can see, um, that indicator in the top left, that is the gravity uh, compass, basically. So there's different varying levels of gravity while I'm outside in this level. So you'll see as I go to this area, it's going to shift up. That means that the gravity has been shifted up for this part. So that means I can use that to navigate around. It doesn't matter a ton in this level, but when I get to Graviter Box, which I want to say is in two, yeah, it's in two levels, um, it will matter a lot more. So that will be how you navigate through the level. Go ahead and crack open this glyph. I'm going to go ahead and take this key glyph to the right. Oop. Ah, come on, you can do it. Ah, dang, come on. I have no idea why it is giving me this problem. There we go. The controls are very dolphin-like, uh, to say the least. So they can be look a little bit slippery at times. Uh, even though I've played this game for so long, now and then something just slips up and they get a little crazy. This game is pretty ambitious in terms of physics. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the save point up here just to be extra safe. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this glyph to break this barrier open. Oh, actually, it's saved. Okay, that's rare. Um, and now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing this really impossible unintended tube jump. Um, I have to hit an angle between right and upright, and I've got to time a charge out of this tube very specifically. So let's see, if I, let's see how many tries it takes me to do it. Ooh, almost first try, but not quite. I was just a little bit off time. Uh-oh, that's not good. Okay, we're going to be fine. Yep, we're good. Uh, this is like a death uh, pit below, so I really don't want to like fall down there. Okay, two second try. You know what? I'll take that. That was a really cleanly executed trick. That is actually meant to be like a backtrack route, but just like, I don't know. I guess they didn't really, I guess they sort of underestimated how well you could move in this engine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get one more barrier glyph to finish the level. This is kind of the old trick. Oh, I missed it. Okay, so we'll try that one more time. Uh, there's a jump I can do right there that makes that way easier. Let me get navigating right through this again. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you can see the gravity can mess with things a little bit. Uh, the physics are very interesting. Go down, hop over, gonna get this, and I'm gonna see if I can make this jump. Oh, I missed it. Okay, that does save a little bit of time if I can get it. All right. It's a pretty tough jump. All right, we're gonna go up. Now we're gonna go to Black Clouds. Uh, I believe there's a new route for this level that's faster. I will be doing an old route just because that's what I'm comfortable doing. I gotta go ahead and do a little movement trick to sonar that glyph through the wall. There's four glyphs I've gotta break in this level in order to beat it. Um, I believe in the new route you can now skip one of them. I don't remember. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the one down here. Yeah, again, I'm gonna be doing a very old route just because that's the one I'm comfortable doing. Give me one more glyph down here and then one up top. So uh, very famously in my world record one, I believe the one that was a sub 40, 
Um, I actually accidentally skipped part of this level. We have not been able to recreate it consistently, um, but you basically like fall into that little crack right there and you can clip to the end of the level. I would think that was the run where I was like, I was like 10 seconds behind and I got this glitch accidentally that we had never even seen before and it saved like 40 seconds. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and pull this up. This is gonna eat the barrier up for me, hopefully without squishing me, because the squish physics are very uh, unforgiving. I'm gonna go straight down and to the right. Now we're gonna see some really weird gravity. Like the gravity, this level's called Graviter Box. Um, the gravity in this level is really funny, um, and you'll see why in a second. Yeah, um, so I'm gonna be going up this tube. This is another unintended route. You can kind of just super jump out of there, and you'll be able to skip a small portion of the level, so it save a bit of time. Um, they, again, I, it's really fun uh, to me. I really enjoy games where you can kind of like push the game past the limits of its movement, and this is one of those games where you can sort of do unintended things if you master it. I'm, I'm very, I'm very fond of uh, games like that, and I think that's why I stuck to this one for so long. Break the pop this barrier open. Oh my gosh, that's never happened before. That was weird. Um, go ahead and exit right here. Now I've got a boss. I've just got to smash this globe against the wall a bunch. I'm gonna go ahead and break it free from these chains, sonar it to move it, and uh, this globe, while I am trying to squish it by pushing it against the wall, it will also soon break free and squish me, which is very, very bad. Um, so now it's gonna chase me around a bit. I think in this, it's gonna go six tries, that's one. Just gotta, come on, try and squish me, you can do it. I believe in you, there we go. Two, three. Ah, come on, you can do it, just try and squish me, it's okay. Four, uh-oh, that's bad, come on. Oh gosh, oh no! <laughs> All right, again, those squish physics are very unforgiving. So I made a bit of a mistake there by going in between it and the wall. So let's try that again. Uh, I'm just struggling a little bit to break it free. There we go, come on, you can do it, you can do it. Break free. Wow, I'm surprised. You know, I'm gonna let it reattach, and I'm gonna reposition myself and just see if I can get this to behave the way I want. So let's do some very slow sonars. There we go. These, are, these can be a little bit finicky. Right, so I gotta break the chains by pushing it against the wall. Oh gosh, okay, sometimes it just bounces really fast, like for no reason, and it's scary. Uh, go ahead, there we go. All right. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And one more. Six, now I can crack this guy open. Um, you can actually still get squished by it while it's like defeated and inactive, so that's funny. All right, so we're gonna be traveling back to the present. I've got these last two orbs. Now I'm gonna get the ability to breathe underwater, which makes absolutely zero difference in the speed run because you move so fast that you don't really need a surface for air anyway. Is now a good time for a donation? Yeah, please. I'm gonna hand it over to our donation reader. Sure. So we got a donation from Dr. Blake. Oh no, okay, sorry, continue. <laughs> $20, a comment is, a time-traveling dolphin? What will Shinguru Miyamoto think of next? <laughs> this is not a Miyamoto game because it's not a Nintendo game. <laughs> My friend Blake is a clown. Anyway. All right. Oh, whoa, okay, that was weird. I, I, I hope I wasn't the only one who just saw that. I think we're good. Text glitch. Text glitch, yay. Um, go back. So we're back. Um, we're, this is the level you saw me go through earlier, but now the dolphin friends are invading it, so we're gonna go through. Um, I'm gonna break this barrier. All right, so I'm going to be uh, skipping a pretty large portion of this big auto-scroller segment by just charging into a wall um, at this right speed, and then it should just clip me through the wall into a different part of the auto-scroller. Exactly like that. So pretty cool. Um, fun fact, that doesn't work in the Japanese version uh, consistently because the auto-scroller moves much slower. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, whoops. I'm sorry, I was on mic and I didn't realize oh, it. Oh, it's okay. Hi, everyone. I enjoy the sound of your voice. <laughs> I love the sound of how awesome I am. I love the sound of your voice. All right. Um, so if you're familiar with Echo 1, you may have heard of a level called The Machine. It is an evil, evil auto-scroller that takes five minutes, and runners to this day of Echo 1 still drop runs to it every now and then. 
Um, this is kind of like, they, they brought it back for Echo 2, but it's like a baby version, probably because the first one was not very fun. Um, so, yeah, th th this is kind of like just sort of a tradition for Echo is you have like an auto-scrolling uh, part at the end of the game that's like going to try to crush you and stuff. So we're on Earth in like the deep ocean now. Um, the Vortex, which are the aliens that have invaded, are here, and I'm going to be uh, defeating their Vortex Queen. have to get through this auto scroller there's stuff that will kill me really fast but if i mash a, if you mash a on your sonar you get like a pretty decent amount of invincibility so i don't have to worry about that too much all right cool so now it's time for the boss i hope i can still one cycle it because i did not practice this at all let's take a look it's really gross looking here we go ew right This game has, like, this game, Echo 1 especially, but this game too has a lot of nightmare fuel. Uh, this does not look good, I think. An okay, that's a two cycle, so that's the first time I've gotten a two cycle in a long time. Hopefully this doesn't take me in, because if I do, I've got to restart, but I think we're all set. Okay, come on. All right, we're good. I'll take a two cycle, that's fine. Uh, as long as I don't die and I don't <laughs> lose. So if you get eaten in this level, you've got to play one of those, like, uh, like alternate levels. Um, and that is not the end of the game. Uh, the game will play a fake credit sequence here, so we've got a lot of time for donations and just hanging out. Um, there's one more part of the game. Um, so we're gonna be watching basically this really long cutscene. This is where I take my bathroom break. We're almost at the end, there's only three more levels. Uh, one of them we do a really big skip in. So I guess to give like a, a bit of history, um, I started speedrunning this game I think at December 2013. Um, my times were really bad, the run was really underdeveloped, but I kind of just put a lot of time into this. Um, and no one else really ran it, but I got it into SGDQ 2015, which was a cool place to show it off. And I guess that run inspired some other people to pick up the game, uh, like Cronoon. I actually still think I had, I had the Twitter DM of him asking me about movement stuff. Um, but there's a lot more focus on this game now, which I think is cool because this is a really neat movement-oriented speedrun that uh, I really enjoy. Um, nowadays, I mostly play fighting games. It's kind of more my thing than speedrunning, uh, but I still really enjoy uh, speedrunning. I've also done other Genesis games like uh, Disney's Aladdin on the Genesis, Lion King on the Genesis. Um, I, to I do not speedrun Toy Story. That game is cursed. Um, I've speedrun Batman Arkham Asylum, Mirror's Edge, just a couple, a lot of other things. I sort of uh, was more of a variety speedrunner at the time. Um, I don't really keep up with the speedrunning community as much, but I still enjoy uh, learning about new tricks and stuff uh, now and then. Yeah. Also, uh, I'm from Massachusetts. I used to live in San Jose, uh, which is why I'm here. Actually, I lived in Cupertino, which is really close. And um, I wasn't planning on being here, but uh, I guess uh, Young heard that I was going to be in town. Um, he was the one who helped put this thing together, and uh, he asked me if I could do a run, so here I am. This is a really cool event, though. I had never even uh, heard of Mag West, so it's fun to be here. This event's really awesome. All right, so I've got another auto scroller. Uh, this one lags like hell. Or excuse me. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to be trying to reduce that as much as possible by kind of staying uh, a little bit more towards the surface where the air rings. And just try not to die. I've actually like lost runs to dying just because there's so many things on screen, and uh, the damage does rack up pretty fast. You don't have a way of regening health in these. In the 2D levels, you just get to eat fish. Yeah, so I'm at 4032 right now, so hopefully I'll be under 45. Um, so the timer actually started you at about 240 for some unknown reason. Oh, okay, so, so this is like yeah. a 38. That's not bad at all. We're good. Considering all my deaths and stuff especially, I'll take it. But yeah, th it's really awesome how far this game has come. I mean, I remember when sub 40 was like a big deal, and now we're, we're, we're thinking about sub 35. I mean, I think that's just the coolest thing. It's been really fun to uh, watch this game grow. What, do, what would you say have been like the, the biggest speed breakthroughs since you kind of stopped actively Ooh. running this? Um, well, they found the I skip, which is saves about four to five minutes. Uh, you saw me do that trick earlier. I think that's probably the biggest one. Around the time I started running, Rezard, who I, I'm sorry if I get this wrong, Rezard, uh, he's, I believe, a Swedish runner, um, found a way to skip Fish City, which is the next level. That saves like a good minute and a half. 
Um, I'm trying to think what else. That's pretty much the main one. Um, the lunar base skip, which they found, uh, actually was the first thing that like like someone did that I had never done in a run before. Uh, and also we found out that we could push, you remember the shell boss, the, uh, the Mori Abyss shell, that we didn't actually know we could push for the longest time, or we thought it was just like not risky because we couldn't figure out how to sustain health, and we didn't really understand how the AI worked, but uh, with a little bit of time we came to understand that one as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and push this fish over to uh, another dolphin. He's going to give me a way to break this cliff and beat the level. The one scare in this level, uh, it's not really, it's pretty tame otherwise, is that there's a way for me to get insta-squished uh, at the end of the level, so hopefully that doesn't happen because like, then i got to start from scratch. Um, I think I should be okay, though. Right, give this fish to the dolphin. There you go. Grab this. Grab some health for safety right there from that fish. We're gonna go down by pushing this block down. And now we're gonna go ahead and just loop our way. Oops, excuse me. Oh, not here, where am I going? Of course. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and loop my way down here, back up. And now I'm gonna break this glyph and uh, just try not to get squished. I don't know why these are at the end of the level. It makes me sad. Uh, there we go. So I'm gonna let this one go down a bit. Just go right through that. You can do this way faster. Uh, I do not quite have that confidence right now, though. <laughs> All right. All right, no problem. Oh, okay. I'm going to be skipping this level by not turning into a school of fish, I hope. Yeah, I got it. So you normally turn into a school of fish and move very slowly in this level. Um, Rezard found a consistent setup where you can just dodge the metasphere altogether, which the game tries to push you into. Um, so I just did that, and now I can go through this level way faster. This legit saves like a minute, I think a minute and a half, because moving it as a school of fish is so slow and clunky, it's basically an auto-scroller. All right, so we're at the last level. Almost done. Um, basically, I have to get these little, these are vortex larvae, these things to open up gates in the level. Um, so I'm going to be doing that by kind of trailing behind them and sonaring them to push them forward. These things will instant kill you, so I do not like to stick around uh, with them. Um, and hopefully I will do it just fine. Uh, this is a pretty big maze level, uh, so I'm going to be kind of uh, moving... Oh, oh, we're good, we're good. I'm going to be kind of moving a specific way um, in order to not hopefully get hit by them. Uh, I need to get this block to push down a current. Uh-oh, okay. Uh, I might... No, we're good, we're good, we're good. I'll push this block. This is, like, not very hard, but it's just nerve-wracking, and, like, this is a really easy place to choke just because you can... Oh, gosh, you can just, like, die. Uh, okay, I'm gonna just go up this route right here. I'm gonna go to the left. And this last guy, I just gotta trail this guy to the end. I'm gonna go extra safety and not try to uh, push him forward too hard because I really don't want to die. <laughs> All right, time? Yep. Um, we started like 2 40 minutes in, so it's like a 42. Um, so this is obviously very rusty. It was really cool that I got to show you some of the stuff in this game. I, I think his channel is just twitch.tv slash Cronoon. Please check out Cronoon. He is like the front runner of this game. He's pushing it way beyond the limits that I would have ever imagined in my time. Um, this is a really cool speed run. Definitely check out uh, Echo One speed runs as well. I believe Half Egg Prophet still has the world record. Um, so yeah, that's that's really it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I think this run's really funny, and this the game itself and concept is so bizarre, so that makes it fun to run as well. All right, All right. thank you so yeah. much. Thank you guys for having me. I love uh, I love being here. This event's great. <laughs>